Does this sound familiar to you? You analyze data in Excel and after your analysis is finished, you create a PowerPoint presentation to show your results. But why do most of us spend additional time and effort to create a presentation when the analysis is already done and the results are there in Excel? Well, after seeing several hundred of Excel spreadsheets over the last years, the most common reason people do that is because the design and layout of their spreadsheets is so bad and confusing that creating a PowerPoint presentation is necessary to present the results in a neat format. And that's why I show you how to make your Excel files look so professional that you can save the time and effort to create a separate presentation and show the results of your analyses directly in Excel. Diving right into one of my favorite tips, conditional formatting with some secrets that you might not know yet. But first, to the classic functionality. Whenever you have numbers, percentages or decimals in a list or a table, you can color the cells based on the numbers relation to each other. To do that, just go to the Home tab and the Styles, there's conditional formatting where you can select the color scale of your choice. There are different color gradients available, but I personally use the green, yellow, red scale most of the time. Note that all of the color scales, they are also available invertedly. But not only can you color the cells, but you can also choose to show data bars either with a gradient or solid fill. I really like that option if you want to make your analysis more visually appealing. You can either show the numbers such that you immediately know the value attached to the bar, but in case not needed, you can also hide the cell values. Just change the number format by highlighting the cells, go to the number section, change the number format under more format options, select custom and type three semicolons in a row in the type field. As you can see, the numbers are gone, but if you click on the cell, you still see the number in the formula bar. To get back to the default setting, just change the number format to number again. And finally, you can show icons instead of color scales or data bars. Under the icon set selection, under conditional formatting, there are arrows, circles, flags, stars, ratings, and more to visualize your data. I find that really useful if you need to flag certain numbers that fall below or above a certain threshold, for example, when analyzing sales numbers or market growth. With all those different options, just be careful to get rid of any formats that you do not like anymore. Otherwise, they might be applied on top of each other. To clear conditional format, just go to clear rules and either clear them only for the selected cells or the entire sheet. When you present your spreadsheet, you only want to show the relevant parts like you would only copy the relevant parts of your analysis to a PowerPoint presentation. The next great tip cleans up your spreadsheets from unnecessary rows or columns such that your sheet looks like this. Additionally, if your colleagues are working with your Excel table, sometimes they might just need one or two tables with a certain number of rows. So it might be a lot more convenient for them to only have those areas shown. This helps to really focus and also reduces the likelihood that someone else messes with your spreadsheet. To limit the area, mark the columns you do not need by clicking into a cell, press Ctrl plus space on Windows, and once the column is marked, press Ctrl, Shift and arrow to the right to highlight all columns to the right. Now either do a right click on top of the highlighted columns and click Hide, or do that by the shortcut Alt-H-O-U-C. Next, let's hide the unwanted rows in a similar fashion. If you want to highlight a row with a shortcut, just click Shift and Space, then Control, Shift and arrow down to highlight all rows below and hide them as well. And now you have the dedicated area of the spreadsheet that you wanted to show and got rid of any other distracting cells. To show the hidden columns and rows again, just mark the last shown column or row, do the same as before, so highlighting the remaining columns or rows underneath or beside, and even if you cannot see that they're highlighted, they are. Now position your cursor slightly next to the last column or row, do a right click and choose unhide. A common but simple question I get is how to get rid of the grid lines in Excel. Sometimes they're super useful, but sometimes you might not want to show them because you prefer a clean spreadsheet. Please, never ever just fill the entire spreadsheet with white color. Yes, it paints over the grid lines, but you're messing with the entire sheet and there's a much easier way to go. Go to the View tab and uncheck grid lines, which make them disappear. Now, if you want to show grid lines in a table again, you have two options. 
Either mark the area where you want to position your table and select to format that area as a table. Or you build your own table and format it with the classic tools and adjust font size, cell color, or work with cell borders to tailor make your table if you prefer a fancier, maybe a cleaner style. To make your spreadsheets pop and easier to navigate, you should make use of colors in a consistent way, but at the same time, please do not overdo it. Put simple, there are three ways I recommend using colors. Color your tabs based on the content, especially when you work with many tabs. For example, you have three tabs with raw data, another three with the detailed analyses, and two tabs showing the summary results. Color the tabs that belong to the same topic in the same color. Thereby, you and your colleagues immediately see where to go and look for specific things. Second, color your cells properly. Best practice is to distinguish between different types of cells, for example, input cells versus those containing formulas, assumptions versus as-is numbers, or totals versus subtotals. It really depends on the type of spreadsheet you're building, but be aware that it's best to color the different type of cells respectively. There's even more that you should be doing with the differently colored cells, but I will come to that in a minute. Before, let's come to the third way of properly using colors, namely to create and format spreadsheet headers. Yes, you have the tab that you can rename, but it has a character limit of 31. And often there is much more that should be said that someone looking at the spreadsheet for the first time knows what's shown on the tab. So use the first two rows and make a header out of it by highlighting the entire rows and coloring them, ideally in the same color as your tab, so it's a common theme. Now you can write a title in the first row and a subtitle or explanation in the second row, such that it's super clear what's shown on the spreadsheet. What you should never do when introducing headers is to merge and center or just merge the rows. This will only cause problems going forward in case you want to add individual columns or highlight several ones to adjust their layout or the like. Just don't do it. Now, if you have an Excel file with many tabs and different topics or sections, as we do here in our example, I recommend using section dividers, just as you would be using in a PowerPoint or Word document. Just add a new tab, change its name to whatever sections you have, for example, summary, details, or raw data, and also change the color of the tab. Either use your mouse and right click on the tab or press Alt H O R to rename and Alt H O T to recolor the tab on Windows. Depending on the number of section or your personal preference, you might want to color the section dividers either with white or black or with the same color as your content tab, but slightly darker. Especially when you have a lot of tabs, that gives you a nice overview and helps to better navigate in the overall file. In addition to the section dividers, you should be using a title page and maybe a second one with an introduction to the file. The title page should include a logo, the project name, the responsible or project team, and the date of the file creation. The introductory tab could include the description or the background of the project or file, again, the responsible for the file and project with their contact information, as well as the legend or color code that is being used throughout the file. You could even include some external links to other relevant documents, or internal links to the different tabs or sections. To include a link, just go to the Insert tab and click on Link. Now you can choose between an external link or a place within this document. There you can choose the tab you want to link and click OK that this is being inserted. Another not very widely followed tip is to never stuff spreadsheets. By stuffing, I mean to put as many information as possible on one sheet without having a clear structure. Worst case, it all starts in cell a1 and the overall sheet does not allow for empty space. This makes a spreadsheet super messy and it's very hard to follow and don't lose the red thread. To avoid this, just do the following. As we already said, include a header so it's clear what this sheet is about. Leave some space below the header and also do not start in column A, but rather in cell B or C, 4 or 5. The margins give the table space to live and make it easier for the reader to navigate. And finally, make sure to split out information that belongs to different topics. I mean, just because an Excel spreadsheet provides almost unlimited space does not mean you have to use it. Remember that tabs are literally free and it makes much more sense to logically split information across different tabs. And finally, make sure to not only use consistent color codes, fonts and font sizes across your spreadsheets, but also consistent row heights and column width. 
For example, when showing calendar month next to each other, they all have different column width. But instead of just leaving the fitted width, rather use the smallest common denominator at the width, such that the table looks much more balanced and clean. Now that you know how to create awesome spreadsheets, watch that video next in order to be able to create as least as convincing PowerPoint presentations.